to these Saints. The Shades are back, baby. It's been a long time since I've used these, but I haven't missed a beat. Anyway, reaction day today. And we have got the 10 dumbest Resident Evil moments. In honor of the Resident Evil 2 remake coming out on Friday. Here we go. And before I get into this, footage from the games is owned by Capcom and the video made by WatchMojo.com. What were Capcom thinking? Welcome to WatchMojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest Resident Evil moments. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the stupidest and most ridiculous moments from throughout all the Resident Evil games. You can give us the girl because you're not worth a penny, I'm afraid. You can die. Number 10, Wesker's Glasses, Resident Evil franchise. Really? I would expect you to be happier to see us. There's no doubt that Wesker is a great villain. His arc of betraying the series' heroes for his own selfish gain was a masterfully done plot twist, but that doesn't mean he gets a free pass for some of his quirks. Unfortunately, it's too late for you. You will not live to see the dawn. While Wesker is portrayed as an all-powerful criminal mastermind, he's thwarted time and time again by his absolute refusal to take off his sunglasses. Choosing aesthetics over practicality every time, during one of his boss fights in Resident Evil 5, he's even defeated by Chris and Shiva turning the lights off, preventing him from being able to see. Just take them off. Really? Really? Number 9, Live Action Intro, Resident Evil. Hey! Mm, yeah, you can understand this one. Implementing live action segments into video games has never really been successful. Even in a good game, people are always left wondering why they didn't just animate it. The precedent for bad live action acting was set by Capcom when the first Resident Evil was released, and after seeing it, it's a miracle anybody could sit through the intro to actually get to the game itself. But the intro had more issues than just being bad. It had to be censored outside Japan to remove images of dead bodies and a brief scene where Chris Redfield smokes a cigarette. No! Don't go! Number 8, really? Ramon Salazar, Resident Evil 4. Oh it boy. Might come as a surprise, but I'm only 20 years old. If Wesker is one of gaming's best villains, Ramon Salazar is one of its worst. A whiny brat with an annoying voice, Leon seems utterly incapable of actually killing him throughout Resident Evil 4, which leads to no shortage of painful encounters with the obnoxious antagonist. I have absolute control. Well, I really don't give a damn. The game's storyline bends over backwards with ridiculous reasons to keep Salazar alive to the end, like Leon missing with a quick time knife throw, or Leon just deciding not to draw his gun, shoot that Salazar like in the face, and like get the, the whole ordeal version. over with. This is no ritual, Evil it's terrorism. Isn't that a popular word these days? The Number 7, Quint and Keith, Resident Evil Revelations. Mm. I'll send Quint and Keith. What? You two, get ready to move. Uh, I hate snow. Comic relief isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it has to be done right in order not to come across as obnoxious. However, the inclusion this is of not one of those cases. is something that probably shouldn't have been done at all. Nobody really needs comedy thrown into their survival horror cocktail. Jackass here! We arrived at Valcoinen Mock Airport. Quentin Keith, or to give them their respective nicknames, Jackass and Grinder, have <laughs> awkward, unfunny scenes in certain well of all the Resident that, Evil action the case. players actually wanted. Their cheesy fooling around only ever comes across as annoying, and luckily, they've never reappeared in later games. Thank goodness for that. Turn guppies in a jaws. Shh. Number 6, Punishing the Nemesis, Resident Evil 3, Nemesis. <gasps> and then says pushing the nemesis. For a game called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the actual nemesis stalking Claire Redfield throughout the entire campaign isn't actually all that frightening. Because of the restrictions of the console, players were- I'm sorry, who? Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the actual nemesis- <sighs> For a game called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, 
the actual nemesis stalking Claire Redfield. Jill Valentine, you idiots! That is Jill Valentine in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Claire Redfield is in Resident Evil 2! Throughout the entire campaign isn't actually all that frightening. Because of the restrictions of the console, players were subjected to long loading periods before cutscenes and scripted events where the nemesis actually showed up, ruining all the suspense. But the segment which really takes the cake is an encounter between Claire and the nemesis on a bridge, where the player is able to push the nemesis over the edge with one easy quick time event. And to think, He's supposed to be scary. <sighs> Number 5. Chris's Biceps. Resident Evil 5. Ah, the boulder punch! Hey, Everyone knows this, this one! It's not just parts of the writing and gameplay where Resident Evil has sometimes fallen short, but also in their character designs. While most of them are your ordinary run-of-the-mill video game protagonists, there was quite a lot of criticism levied towards Chris Redfield's character model in the fifth game. Namely, his arms. How big are those things? He never to skips all day, that's for certain. He has a pair of ridiculously oh, oversized biceps, muscles so extreme that players found it hard not to make a steroid joke at every opportunity. Thankfully, this right. was toned down considerably in his later appearances. Wait! Number 4 Jet Gameplay. Resident Evil 6. Really? This was basically. This game was, was basically the biggest Capcom and best Resident going Evil yet, all combining Call of Duty everything on Capcom had learned after 16 years making the series, but it was inherently unrecognizable as a Resident Evil title. Thank, Thank you. you. Intel sends only the carrier. The segment where this is most obvious is during Chris's campaign, where players will have to board a jet plane in order to strategically take down an aircraft carrier. Yes, really. Aerial combat in Resident Evil. When you're done with the boat, an enormous B.O.W. will also appear which you need to take down all the while trying to master some very awkward flight controls. That looks like more trouble than we need. Yeah. Shit, Bang. this about to get dirty. Number 3. The Whole Plot. Resident Evil 6. Ah, goody gumdrops. With every new game or movie, the overarching plot and lore of the Resident Evil franchise just gets more and more convoluted. This all came to a head in Resident Evil 6, when at its core, the complex plot was really just a story about a guy who couldn't get a girl to like him. Simply really? With Ada, whom he clones to create really? Ada, quickly proves to be a pushover, and is ultimately his downfall. Your hatred for Simmons drove you to tear down the world they created. But it was your conscience, Carla, that saw you fail. During his boss fight, after going through a dozen different forms, from a dinosaur to a giant fly, Simmons is finally pushed off a building and impaled, because apparently, bullets just aren't good enough. Number 2, Jill Sandwich, Resident Evil. Oh, we had to get this in at some point. The master of unlocking. Stop it! Don't open no that door! Lots of English translations of Japanese games are full of errors, but there's only so far something can be considered an error before it becomes bad writing. Resident Evil not only cemented Jill Valentine in history as the master of unlocking, but at one point, she was also nearly turned into a Jill Sandwich by a booby-trapped room with a descending ceiling. You'd think Barry would take his partner almost dying a little more seriously, though Jill just laughs it off too. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. Maybe this would have been overlooked as well if it wasn't for the notoriously shoddy English voice acting we were all subjected to. Jill, here's a lockpick. It, it might, might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, unlocking take, take it with you. you. Before we and I've not even pick, played the original version mentions. of Resident Evil. Really? A playground in Resident Evil 6? Okay, I'm done. Tofu? In Resident Evil 2! Tofu! Number one, punching the boulder. Resident CALLED Evil. IT! 
called it! That's the just the stepping title, stone I Wesker need. Wesker has finally mutated beyond all recognition, a giant monstrous shadow of his former self. The big showdown against him takes place, first of all, in the mouth of an active volcano, mm -hmm. which is plenty dumb all on its own. Yep. But the part players remember most distinctly is Chris making a path for Shiva to cross the treacherous lava by pushing an enormous boulder into it. Or rather, punching an enormous boulder into it. <laughs> This is just a short quick time event, but the fact that Chris was even capable of moving the rock, which is at least five times his size, speaks for itself. Yep! It's over. Yes. Finally. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thank heavens that list is over! And I think it's inevitable I'm going to get to that stage where I end up going through the rest of those games. Well, mind you, with that Albert Wesker, um, with that Albert Wesker um, entry with his sunglasses, yeah, I think I might be just as guilty for that. But nevertheless, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, Hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the left to get his notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Preview the video on the left, playlist on the right. Throwback Thursdays tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.